Hello Knitters, Barbara Benson here, live at the knitting table at A Good Yarn Sarasota to talk to you about all kinds of knitting and other, we got some crochet, fibery fun. I'm so glad that you can join us today. We're here every Wednesday from 12 to 1. The store is closed during this time, Wednesdays 12 to 1 so that we can do this without interruption. We haven't figured out a good way to do it with people in the store because people just get too excited in a yarn store and they're always talking in the background. So, because we're closed, uh, we have Susan Post. The owner is in her office and she's ready to talk to you in the chat below. If you have questions, need clarifications, if you're pretty sure I made a mistake, <laughs> just let us know. We also have the awesome Susan F behind the counter and she will be answering the phone if it rings and also helps me when I mess stuff up. So that means I can take my mask off so I can talk to y'all. There we go. Welcome to everyone. Um, we always start off just by mentioning we are open to the public uh, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 3. 11 to 3 not 11 <laughs> that's our open hours except on Wednesdays where we are closed from 12 to 1 we are not currently able to allow indoor knitting around the knitting table but we have beautiful weather and a overhang outside of our store so you are more than welcome to come and sit outside socially distance and bring your knitting and have some fun we do have some chairs, but if you want a comfy chair or to make sure that we don't run out, you can always bring your own. One of those folding bag chairs would work. Bring some water, bring your knitting, and have some fun. There are several people out there today. If you really like the camaraderie, our busiest days for outside knitting are Saturdays. So feel free to come and hang out, come inside, do some shopping, go back outside, do some knitting, back and forth. It's great. And you know, if you really want to, there's Culver's is right over there. You can go get some ice cream. So <laughs> let's see, welcome to everybody who is watching. Um, we, at, you know, we haven't figured out how to do in-store knitting yet, and we are not currently having in-store classes, except we have figured out, we're very excited that we are now offering one-on-one -on -one um, knitting and crochet lessons. You can start from scratch if you just need to get going, if you need to learn how to knit or crochet, or if you have a pattern you need help tackling, any of that sort of stuff. You can get those in half hour blocks. Um, the crochet is on Saturdays from one to three. You can get a 30 minute block anytime between one to three at, for in-person one-on-one crochet help and lessons. And then for knitting, it's on Fridays and we have blocks between 10 and 11 and then between three and four. So it's on either side, you know, the beginning and the end. Um, hi Debbie, oh, it's windy in Wisconsin. You should go fly a kite, that would be fun. So, um, yeah, I don't know why I said that. It sounds like fun though. Actually, it's fun though. Fly the kite on the beach. I need to get a kite and take my kid out. That would be fun. We've had some windy days. Um, so, you can go on to a goodyarnsarasota.com and under classes, you will find the place to reserve a half hour slot for in-person, one-on-one knitting or crochet help. Uh, help lessons what have you you talk to the teacher it's your time if it's just one pesky stitch that's giving you problems then they can probably help you with it or if you want to start from scratch with the beginnings of knit and crochet that is how we can get you learning it you had culvers for lunch on monday jennifer that's awesome did you have cheese curds cheese curds are delicious i love them i love dipping them in the tomato stuff so so tasty okay so that being said, that those are the only in-store lessons we are offering. We are offering classes and stuff via Zoom. Zoom has made it amazing that we can reach out to lots of other 
people. Um, and I had someone in my class last night who was in the United Kingdom. We're like, what time is it there? And it was 10 o'clock. I teach one hour, we've called them Technique Tuesdays. On Tuesdays, they are from five to six o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Tuesdays. And we look at one specific concept or technique and work our way through as much of it as we can in the allotted hour. Um, who else? Anybody? Too cold today? It's in the 30, yeah, I don't, I don't think flying a kite when it's 30 degrees is a good idea, unless it's shaped like a snowman. So, um, last night we had a cabling 101 and we had people started who had never done a cable and now they're ready to go out and do some super fun cables. We currently have one more Technique Tuesday scheduled for next week, which is weaving in ends everybody's favorite I know I know it's not fun but it's something you need to know how to do and really it's something that if you do it wrong it can mess up your project because ends working out is a whole lot of no fun I got a little twitchy today because um, I'm on Facebook and I'm in a lot of those like group knitting groups where it's people chatting and someone posted a picture and she used um, it was like, my magic knot came undone. There are people who are like, oh, I don't weave in ends, I just use these knots. And she used a little magic knot, magic knot that was supposed to stay done and then clipped her ends really, really short and it popped out. And now she has just these little, two tiny little ends and it just makes me twitchy. So, weaving in ends. Looking forward to any of you who want to learn how I do that. Um, then we're gonna take a little Tuesday night break for April, but what is in the works and what I'm planning on is something we're going to call the Fancy Stitch Club. <laughs> I just came up with that name. Um, and the idea is to take that Tuesday night hour and learn how to do one interesting fancy stitch. And when I talk about fancy stitches, if you go online, there's always, again, in these groups, people posting pictures of these intricate stitches where it's more than just you knit or you purl it. It's like you gotta knit into the same, same stitch six times and then move it over here and then turn it around here. That they're, they're complex to execute, but they give really, really interesting effects. So what it'll be is a class where we can focus on one stitch or stitch technique so that you can then have that ability in your arsenal and next time you see a pattern that features a stitch like that you'll know how to do it so that is the current idea i am still developing it let us know if that sounds like fun to you again we'll just be working with scrap yarn swatching and learning how to do the techniques involved in fancier stitches um, uh, you know, like flower stitches and daisy stitches and dip stitches and lifted stitches and knitting one below and all of these things that are a little outside the, the, the standard methods of executing knitting stitches. Um, hello, Cindy. Welcome. Yeah, cheese curds. Fist bump, Jennifer. <laughs> Gotta have the cheese curds. So, um, okay. So I talked about weaving and ends. Fancy Stitch Club. The Fancy Stitch Club will probably start in May. So it gives me a little time to come up with at least a four, you know, a several weeks worth so that you know what is coming down the pike. Um, okay. So what else do we have here? Oh, something that you may have been waiting for. We cannot keep these in stock. Dun, dun, dun we got the Addy Click standard length tips in. We've got these sets in now. We had the short and we had the shorts, we had the longs, then we had the shorts, and now we have the longs back in. And these aren't technically, we call them the longs because they're not the shorts, but these are the standards. And what these are, are five inch-ish tips for the Addy Click, and these are the square ones. I'm gonna pull out a big one so you can see it, it is squared off, slightly rounded, and it's got the bumps on it. Now what's really cool about these is they help with repetitive strain issues 
because when you're clamped down on a circular one, your hand is in the same position all the time and it can aggravate tension hand issues. Since this is square, every time you grasp it, it shifts a little and it moves just minutely your hand position. And so if you have uh, hand strain issues, people are really, really liking these. This is the Addy Click system. Uh, this comes with the tips. It comes with brand new. Oh, a book just walked in the door. We're going to look at it together when we get to that. Um, it comes with cables. It comes with the cable stoppers. Uh, it comes with this lovely case. And the Addy Click tips. All of the different tips work with all of the diff all the same all of the cables. So if you have a bamboo set, if you have any other sets, it's the same mechanism. So you can extend your cable inventory. Um, okay, so this is, this, this one comes with eight sizes of Addy Click Rocket standard tips, which means the length. And so it's US 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. One each, 28, 32, and 40 inch. They're nylon cords with lifeline eyelets, the connector, that, um, and then a grip to make changing tips easier. So if you've been waiting on these, we have them in. People love them. Okay. Um, what is the book that just came in? I want to look at it. Inventive Weaving on a Little Loom by Sign Mitchell. Discover the full potential of the rigid heddle loom for beginners and beyond. I might have to take this book home. I have a Cricut loom. I love it. It's super, super fun. Oh, wow. This is chock full of, let's, let's just look real quick at the, okay. Oh my goodness. Look at the table of contents. We've got all that. We've got all that. So we've got Welcome to the Warp Side, which is Mystery of Weaving, Old and New Looms, Quick Tour of the Heddle Loom, What Kind of Loom Should I Buy, Get Set to Weave, Measuring the Warp, Winding the Warp on and Threading, Preparing the Weft, Get Your Weave Thing Going, Making the Shed, Finding the Beat, Advancing Your Warp, Tech Support, When Things Go Wrong, Tension Prompt, oh my goodness, Getting the perfect finish, securing the weft, dealing that warps would go wrong, color theory in a nutshell, slow and fancy, so weave stretch are different things you can do, fast and fancy, three heddle adventures, converting a four shaft weave drafts for use with rigid heddle loom. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> uh, textural effects and wild yarns. So this has some amazing this oh look at that i don't even know what's going on there but it's gorgeous um yeah this has patterns in it this has a lot of beautiful this is amazing if you are a weaver or want to be a weaver i think this is a all like suddenly required book for you this is cool look look at this cute little bag tiny little thing for a digital e-reader tapestry very cool so inventive weaving on a little loom i'm sure that laura is going to be taking a look at that speaking of laura that is one of the things um one of the other zoom things we offer on mondays from 9 to 11 we have a free weaving clinic where you can come and sit on zoom with other weavers and chat about weaving and if you need any help laura is there to help you and then tuesdays 9 to 11 we have the same thing but for tapestry weaving so if you want to get your weave on you can come and join us these are free all you have to do is go to a good yarn sarasota.com and click on um it's, there's, it has a separate button. You just click on it, it says weaving. <laughs> and you can just sign up. And the only reason you sign up is so that it will send you the Zoom link so that you can attend it. So that is super fun with weaving. And while I'm talking about that, I should probably mention, remind you, we talked about this last week, April 13th, 
put it on your calendar, go to a goodyarnsarasota.com and click on classes and then click on events. Under events, you will find the Atenti trunk show. We love Atenti bags here at A Good Yarn, and this is gonna be a special trunk show where you're gonna get to see all different kinds of Atenti bags and order them right then. Um, when you attend at the event, you will get a 10% discount on bags. And if there is a specific bag you are interested in, please let us know. What you can do is go to the Atenti bag website and, um, excuse me one moment. Sorry, fibers get in my nose. <laughs> I have so much fuzz around me and it gets in my nose. Um, yeah, I was trying not to do anything, but it was tickling and tickling. Okay, this is what happens when I can't edit my videos. <laughs> so um, you can go to the Atenti uh, website and look through their stuff. And if there's a specific bag, a specific style of bag, a specific color of bag that you want to see, just send us uh, at info at a good yarn, .com an email and we can request to make sure that they show it to us. So that is super cool. And so make sure to go in and sign up for it's Thursday, April 13th at 7 p.m. The Atenti Trunk Show. Um, okay, that was on here, that was on here. Uh, okay, I mentioned the crochet uh, lessons that you can get. You may have noticed that behind me is a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous crocheted afghan or throw. This is called the Venetia, and I'm going to move so you can see it. It is just absolutely beautiful here let me so you can see oh no it's coming down <laughs> here we go <laughs> well that worked well didn't it <laughs> so here we go look at this it is so beautiful it is worked from the center out, I believe, and it is this gorgeous drapey with beautiful stitches. And we originally had a class scheduled. Here, let me put this back up. You see why I block stuff now. It gets a little busy back here. Da, da, da. There we go. So we originally had a class scheduled to learn how to make this particular pattern and what happened is it was getting ready to start right before lockdown happened about this time last year so the class had to be canceled well it was postponed and postponed and at this point it's just you know not really going to happen so if you are interested in making this piece what you can do is sign up for one of the half hour lessons that I mentioned and you can see what you need to, you might need to sign up for multiple depending on how much help you need. This is what it looks like. Here is the pattern. You can see it in lots of different colors. Venetia throw. What we, what our crocheter crocheted it in is this gorgeous, this is the concentric cotton. And this is making the yarn work for you. Look, isn't it gorgeous? That throw took two skeins of this. And you can see the colors. It is just absolutely beautiful. So we started with the, so what you do is you start with the brown and knit, and then the second one, you start with the white. So it goes in and out. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, uh, pattern is available in English only and written in U.S. terminology. Um, I can't really talk about crochet. There's a lot of pages. There's a lot of stitches. <laughs> and this is why you need to be a crocheter. But it's, it is. It's just really, really beautiful. You can see there's a close-up of some of the very cool stitches that are used. So if you're interested in this throw, sign up for lessons now. We cannot, this particular pattern is only available directly from the designer through her Ravelry site. So if you want this pattern, you're going to have to purchase it online by yourself, um, but we can help you through making it. 
um, we just can't sell it to you through the store. Sometimes that's the way that designers have their stores set. So, and while we are on this particular gorgeous yarn, it kind of segs us into one of, the, I have a bunch of patterns to show you and they are all, Susan decided we, what, what? We forgot something major, I'll bring it. Uh-oh, we forgot something major. It was a little chaotic this morning. Um, so we are actually, I have a lot of one skein. We decided, you know, one skein patterns would be a fun thing to feature today. And we have one that uses this yarn. Oh my goodness. Yes, that is something major. Yeah, yeah, move the, we've already shown the acne, so, oh, here we go. You gonna bring me the pattern for it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're changing things up. I will keep on this, but Susan's gonna bring me the pattern. Um, let me get this behind. Oh, you guys, I'm sure you're anticipating now. It's super exciting. Um, so this is the Jaquinta shawl by Amba O'Brien. And we have a sample right here. And this is another example of making the yarn work for you. So this is a very straightforward, very beautiful uh, diamond lace pattern and it's going to be worked side to side starting here and you just build up your diamonds and since the yarn is gradienting it looks like you're working a lot harder than you actually are so this is isn't it gorgeous and this is an example so let's look at the different colors of concentric cotton we have we have, do these have names? Au Natural, which is what the Afghan was in. Um, this, here, we'll stick this up here. Ah. This is, the Jaquinta sample we have is in this one, which is LYS, 20, LYS day, isn't that pretty? Super nice. Um, we've got, this is Urchin. Ooh, purple. I love me some purple. So it goes from dark to very, very pale, pale purple. Um, we've got... This one's amazing. Shades of coral. Oh, so pretty. Now you could do the shawl or you could do the afghan in any of these colors. Um, just absolutely gorgeous. Michael made the sample. That is fun. This is Tracy. Love to know who Tracy is because this gray pink combo with the outside is a very, very pale bluish color. Great. We've got, this is so a good yarn, Sarasota. I can barely stand it. Aquatic. Amazing. There are just so many cool colors here. We've got pastel pop. So this goes from a really dark teal into through purples, blues into a pink. Um, we already seen that one. I don't think we've seen this one. This is nautical, light blue through light blue to a slightly darker blue to bright yellow to a super dark blue in the middle. And this one loves you guys. Look how much it loves you. <laughs> so that one's really cool. I think that's all the colors we got. Um, yes, 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 yes. And we looked at this one. No, we haven't looked at this one. This is Shades of Denim. So if you like blues, this blue, I think this one would look really good in the Afghan or the shawl or any of it. It's just super fun. So that is our tower <laughs> of concentric cotton that we have. I'm gonna scooch over, there we go. So those are gorgeous. And let's talk, oh, I should give you the deets on this one. So this is a 200 gram skein. So it is a very large skein this back in here making a little tower um 929 yards in one skein so that is why you were able to make that huge afghan with just two skeins because that's a little almost 2,000 yards 1900 yards so that is great i just love it love it so much um it is 100 pima cotton it says that right on the front and this is neat in the way that it actually creates the, the variegation um, is that it's actually 
multiple tiny strands. You can see right there, it's multiple tiny strands. This is, it's like four strands and the four strands, what happens is they start swapping out strands. So it starts like this one, it's all the dark ones, but then they start introducing different colored strands and that's one of the ways it changes color. So it's cool. How much do you need for the shawl? The shawl is one skein. One skein over 900 yards makes this shawl. So that's, we grabbed so one skein makes the shawl. I'm waiting for her to tell me what other yarns. Okie doke. Oh, my nose again. Sorry guys. So yeah, so Jacinta, one skein makes the shawl. Um, other one skein, oh, I've got so much here to tell you about. Um, another, other one skein shawls that we wanted to show you. So here is this one. This one is great. This is Furinji. Here we go. Furinji by Angela Tong. And it is, says it's an asymmetrical triangle of shawl, worked from one point increasing outwards. The shawl has a garter stitch body and features lace edging with a decorative fringe created by Picos. It's easy to change the length of the shawl by adjusting the number of repeats of the body. Design is a wonderful way to show off variegated yarn. This takes sport weight yarn. Yes. Okay, we've got it. Yes. See, this is why Susan and Kat are in there to answer the questions. Um, and so this calls for sport weight yarn and it's one skein of Miss Babs Kira on a size six needle. Um, you could do it with other weights. You would just have to adjust your needle size. Uh, here is a picture of what it looks all flared out. So it's really a very good knit. It's an easy knit with just a little bit of interest in it. You can see it's got this little lacy edge with the little, um, it's so cute. So this part, which one is the end? Hmm. Let me see if I can figure out where the cast on is. One of these edges is the bind off. <laughs> so I think it is. I think this is the beginning. So you begin with the lace and then that lace stays on the edge with the little Pico edge. And then we've got the Pico bind off. So super, super cute. And the other, so this is in Kira Sport and any of the other sport weights we have would work. And then um, we had another that just kind of walked off. <laughs> Susan relocated it on me. Where'd it go? Well, I'm trying to find my paperwork on it and I, I think I misplaced it. So, you know what? She just swapped it out for me. But I wanna show you some Kira. So we have pulled some skeins of Kira for me to show you. And oh my goodness, looky here. So, so beautiful. Again, the pattern works beautifully with variegated yarns. So we have, this is Foxy. Love it. This would be so amazing for the fall, I think. It's got these golds going into, it's very harvesty. This is Bewitching. Great pinks and purples, but then it goes into these darker kind of blacky, um, almost greens down here. It's a super, super dark green. This is deep sea jellyfish, one of our favorites and everybody else's favorites. This is such a great color, but and it's great on Kira. This is called Celebration and it is a party in a skein. We've got, I think, every color. We've got pinks, greens, blues, reds, yellows, even dark, dark blue. It's just absolutely gorgeous. This is a little more sedated. This is called Petrified Forest, but I love these kind of deep adobes that are in here. This one is gorgeous. Look at that. And then this, this is a statement. 
This is Dancing Spirit, and look how beautiful that is. If you want a bright accessory that will just make, it'll make your outfit, you will have to dress around this accessory. Absolutely gorgeous. I love these peaches and almost cream sickly colors that we have in here. So that one is called Dancing Spirit. So again, that is for the one skein shawl Furinji. Oh, I need to tell you about specifics about Kira. Kira is 100% superwash wool and one skein is eight ounces. It's 560 yards. So to get this size, you need about 560 yards, which is more than is normally found in a sport weight piece skein. So you might have to get two, if you want it that big, you might have to get two skeins of another sport, but we have the one skeins, or you could just have one skein of sport and make a smaller piece. So that would work beautifully. My helper <laughs> is bringing me more yarn to show y'all. Here, why don't we shove that back okay. there and you can shove that this over is here. All for cats. Excellent. There we go. Okay, so that's Faringi. We really like that. Um, okay, speaking of Miss Babs, here's another one skein shawl. This is Ulta Flex by Jennifer DeSalle and it takes one skein of Yauza. We know that's kind of cheating saying that because of how big Yauza is, but it's just one skein. There's only two ends to weave in. And this is work from end to end using any amount of yarn. Utiliflex offers ultimate flexibility in yarn choice and yardage, endless knitability in friendly garter stitch, and a fun drop stitch lace pattern. Cast on at one end and work sideways, this shallow triangle makes the most of any amount of yarn suitable for any base and one any base and one to an infinite infinite number of skeins the garter stitch main body begins with a few stitches and increases every right side row until half the total yardage has been used then decreases back to a few stitches at the same time blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> so it's work side to side. You increase for half your yarn, you decrease for half your yarn, is what that's saying. And it is just an absolutely lovely pattern that is amazing for variegated yarns. And here is the sample we have to show you that just came in today. Look at that. So this is the decorative drop stitch pattern and it's super cute and then it's got a garter body so you start at one end and it's got this blunt end and then you're going to knit excuse me then you're going to knit and knit and knit until it's the you know you've used half your yarn and then you start decreasing and it ends the same way so this is it's got a great drape because yauza is amazing yauza is dk weight and one skein of Yauza is 560 yards of DK weight. So again, a little bit of cheating in definition of one skein. But as you, the author said, you can do this with just about any yarn. You have one skein, choose your needle size, knit half of it, and then decrease for half of it. And that's all you do. If you do that, I highly recommend you use a scale to weigh your yarn to know how much you start with, and when you start getting towards where you think's the end, then you swap it out. So I have, we pulled just a couple of skeins of Yauza that we think would be really awesome in this pattern. So this is Ansel, black and white. Sometimes we have people coming in here and it is so hard to find a black and white skein of yarn, and this is just amazing. This is gonna be dominantly white with black in it. This is Toronto. I love the greens in here. So this is grays with these flashes of tealy blue in them. So gorgeous. And then this is Calming Aura. Love it. We've got these beautiful soft blues that get a little bit darker and then transform into this gorgeous purple. So any of these would be great in Ultiflex. Okay, then let's show you, I'm going to show you a couple of patterns that are designed 
for one skein of fingering weight yarn. So we've got the Lightweight Hipster by Hoki Locatelli. And it is, the Hipster was a heavier yarn. She put out Lightweight. It calls for one 400 yard skein of fingering weight yarn. And you can do it in just about any fingering weight yarn. It is a top down crescent with one really fun feature stitch. And this would be one of those stitches that we, the idea of the fancy stitch club, this is one that we might address. There are techniques that you use that use this cross stitch technique that's a little bit, you know, it's a little hard to describe. So this definitely might be on the list. Let me know if y'all would like this as one of the fancy stitches. So this is the hips, lightweight hipster. It's got fun little dangles on it. Super cute. This is in swanky sock. Um, just gorgeous, so soft. But you could also do this in one of our cottons or linens, and it would be then really lightweight and really nice. Um, so that's that. Then also in Swanky Sock, um, we have the Birds and Ships Cow by Caitlin Hunter. And this is a little cow. Again, this is another fingering weight one. And it is one of the little bandana style cows. So this is what it looks like when you knit it. Let me, here. See, it's got the bandana shape. It's knitting around. So it's super cute. Let me see how much yardage this calls for. Okay. This calls for 400 yards. We did it in um, the Swanky Sock. It's absolutely soft and delicious. It's got a garter tab cast on, and it looks like you work flat and then join to work in the round. So that is great. Here are the pictures in the pattern to show you what she did. We did not put our little tassel on it, but she has a fun little tassel. Optional, you can totally do it yourself. So that's Birds and Ships. It's just got this beautiful center lace detail by Caitlin Hunter. And then we have, this is uh, our Guy Renetta. Again, any uh, single skein of fingering weight yarn, you can do this one in. The original was knit in actually in a yarn that only had 300, 370 yards. So it's a lighter skein, smaller skein. And this is, again, this is similar to the, um, the Yauza one in that what you do is you start at one side. Let me see where my bind off is. Here we go. So you start here. <laughs> I had to find the beginning. Um, so you start here and you have a setup that's lace and then once you finish the lace you get it to the width that we want you just start adding garter on the bottom and you can so there's like a small set let's see how, how many rows is the setup so our setup is um 16 rows that you repeat several times um so it's a total of four repeats of 16. i can't do that math in my head but then once you what 64. 64 so the setup is 64 rows and that's just from here to here and then after that it is a um two two row repeat and you just repeat those two rows until essentially you've used up your yarn so this pattern works with just about any amount of yarn you have. You can do it with one skein. If you want to do it with sport or a heavier yarn, all you have to do is go up a few needle sizes and get pretty drape. So that is our Guy Renetta. Again, another one skein shawl. And then well, uh, another cow. So if you wanted to do, if you want to work in worsted weight, we have, this is Ring the Gap. This one, it's another bandana style cowl. See how bad I can mess up my hair. <laughs> oh my 
my goodness. I nailed it. It's all going wonky. Hang on. I don't know why I'm doing this because it's just going to get more wonky. So it's a bandana style cowl. This one is knit entirely in the round. And it's just a great unisex neck, neck warmery kind of thing. This is great because it's got this panel. It tucks inside your jacket and keeps you. It's, it's kind of tight around the neck and it keeps you nice and warm. And you know what? You know what this is great for? I was told this by a friend. Riding a motorcycle. Because when you're going fast, if you don't have something that's blocking that jacket part, you can get pretty cold on a motorcycle depending on what it is. So this takes um, around 200 yards of worsted weight yarn. And I pulled a few yarns. Um, it takes a size eight needle. Uh, it's just knit, knit front back, purl, purl two together. Those are really your only stitches you got going on here. Um, yeah, all knitting around. So here are, I just pulled out these two colors. We have a bunch and I've shown you before. This is the Neighbor Fiber, Neighborhood Fiber Company Studio Worsted. It's 100% organic merino, 200 yards in a skein. And I think these would be, I love this color. I think it would look amazing. Um, this one's Oliver. And this one is Holland's Market. They're just the two I grabbed, but you can see this is similar to what the sample is in and that it's a hand painted and it gives you that color uh, contrast. But you could also, especially if you wanted to make a bunch of these and have them be easy care, if you wanna make them as gifts, um, it would work great in our Ultra Wool. Ultra Wool is a great, it's super wash. It holds up beautifully and is great if you're knitting for people and you don't know what kind of care level the item is going to receive. I just grabbed a few colors. Um, these are, I think would work great. These are the Heathers. So they do have some visual texture to them, but of course you could do it in a solid and it would be absolutely gorgeous. And um, this is another Heather. I love this deep burgundy. And we have essentially a whole aisle of this. It comes in so many different colors. You could pretty much do any color you want, but I also decided to pull these new, the Halter Roll hand paints. You could definitely use one of these and have some super fun with the colors in here. And because of the texture of this, it moves around the colors and it's gonna look really nice. So. We have all kinds of options in worsted for that. Okay, it's time to rearrange. Oh my gosh, I have so much stuff to show you. So, um, there it is. The late edition, the amazing thing. We're so excited. We've talked about this a couple times. This is the Reed Pullover. You've seen the Reed cardigan. We have been, people have been asking for a pullover version and our amazing Catherine has done it again. It is absolutely gorgeous. The um, finished measurements, we've got 36, 40, 44, 48, 52, 56, and 60. So we have a wide range of sizes. Um, and so I'm gonna read. So after this success of my Reed cardigan, a pullover version was suggested. It's very, very aggressively <laughs> suggested. I wanted this new design to be the same, but different. Reed pullover has the same drape and flattering shape with a slightly fuller fit for layering, updated details, and a full length sleeve. This has quickly become one of my favorite styles to wear. It's cozy, like your favorite sweatshirt, but oh so elevated. So. It has the amazing flared back detail um, that is flattering on everyone in here. Let me show it to you. So here we go. So it's got this gorgeous back detail that flares out and gives you your hip shaping that most of us <laughs> uh, really need. It drapes beautifully. And then we've got 
this fun front detail where it, you, I love, I love, 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 love V-necks. It's just a great, I mean, just gorgeous piece that you could wear with jeans. You could put it over a skirt. You could wear it with we just. Have a model coming. Oh, so our amazing Susan F is going to come and put it on for us. Ooh, doo -doo. Um, while I gather the yarns to show you. Okay. There we go. Here we go. So there's Miss. Here, you, can you? Which, where do you want me to go? Here. There you go. So Susan is going to show you how it looks. Do a little twirl. I uh, see how the flare works in the back. It is just. Perfect. It does. It fits you it, absolutely perfectly, like it was made for you. It is. And as you can see, she gave it a little bit of extra for layering. Susan did put it on over. Show. Oh, show the arm detail, Susan. I hadn't seen that. Look at this. So this is echoing this front detail and the back detail at the same time. And I think it flares. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it yep. starts narrow and it just, I love the details that Catherine puts into her pieces. So that is the read pullover. Thank you so much, Susan. Dun, dun, dun. And now I got a naked mannequin behind me. <laughs> so the sample is in the solstice from magpie fibers did she bring me any of that no she didn't okay. <laughs> but um we have quite a few different suggestions solstice is a dk and we have quite a few different suggestions she's going to bring that to me um so that i can tell you the details on this if this is because I love the solstice. It is actually a wool silk cotton blend is what gives it this beautiful, beautiful texture. Um, oh, there we go. Julie says it is well written. So that is awesome. That thing attacked my hair. Oh, here's a few other colors that are available in the solstice. So solstice DK is 50% domestic superwash merino. Hang on. 25% cotton and 25% silk. It is 300 yards, 300 yards, and 100 grams. So this is, um, oh, and there's the rest of the colors. Thank you so much, Vanna. Um, <laughs> this is boot cut. It's a beautiful blue, but you can see the little slubbies. That's the cotton and the silk. Then we also have silky, which is this gorgeous dark charcoal -y color. We've got Tupelo Honey love it um oh so we okay i probably shouldn't be showing you all these colors which is why this is what we got but she says we only have one shade of it that's enough to do it um you know this this pandemic is causing problems with supply <laughs> we need to get our yarn but not of all of it's available but it is just gorgeous um and we have many other beautiful yarns that it can be worked in. This, I think, is really a great and interesting idea. It's gonna change the drape of it, but it'll be beautiful. This is the Wool Folk Straw, S-T-R-A. I think it's supposed to be pronounced straw. And it is, where are the details? This is 50% ultimate merino and 50% linen. And it has like a chain structure so this is going to give you a lightweight version of it and it's going to have this beautiful texture in it but the details are so simple that they will shine through the texture and this comes in the and this is one of those they named it extra special this is color s3 <laughs> this is color s5 it's beautiful I want to say it's this one I've always had a hard time looking at it I think it's a gray but in certain lights it looks green it's just beautiful this is color number one this is color number two this is a really pale pale pink straw is from wool folk yes it's great 
and this is color four. And this one, if I hold it next to it, you can really see that this is definitely more of a blacky gray, and this one has definite green undertones. It's just hard to see. It's beautiful, okay? We're gonna stick that over there. And then another suggestion, and this would be super fun, is the uh, Suburban Stitcher Tweed DK. And bringing this tweed in would be really, Kat is making her own in straw. Okay, that is super cool. I cannot wait to see that. And we might be able to talk her into letting me show it to you once it's done, or at least she'll have pictures. I'm sure she'll have pictures. So this is rouge, curry, and chicory. And so either any of these would work. And I think that the flex would bring really interesting fun to this is doo -doo -doo, uh, 65, no, 85% superwash merino and 15% Donegal nep. Nep is the little, the little booglet. <laughs> Apparently that's called nep. Um, so it will work in that. And then, ah, this is delicious. This is the Primrose Cottage DK, and it is 70% merino, 15% yak, and 15% silk, 330 yards, and 113 grams. So this is going to bring a beautiful drape, and it's got a shine and a luster to it that is just amazing. This is Break Angels, Last Kiss, and Halloween. So I, I love 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 this one this is my choice <laughs> if anybody wants to knit me this sweater this is the color i wanted i'm just kidding so gorgeous and then of course one of our favorite dk's Dun -dun -dun! we could definitely do it in yowza yowza is 100 percent superwash merino wool 560 yards to the gigantic stain and so we could definitely do this in Yauza. So we have beautiful, beautiful DK selection for this amazing new, I'm gonna turn it around because that feature, this back really is, it just makes this sweater. So um, from Saudi Arabia, hello, I'm so glad you're watching. Hello, welcome. So that is the Reed Pullover from Catherine. Bush, my bush. Cat's gonna have to teach me how to say her last name. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, and now we got one more thing to round out the hour. Uh, I asked Susan F, our amazing model, to take a look at our notions. Because, you know, you guys are always getting the things that are talking to me that I think are interesting. And I thought, hey, Susan, please take a cup look and let's pick out a couple of notions. You know what? Where's my notes? I have misplaced my notes. You would not believe the mess I have here. Um, where'd it go? Because there's something else here I need to talk to you about. There it is. In the pile. Okay. So, the first thing she brought me were these super fun Katrinkles right on wipe off bag tags so that you can, um, you can put these on your knitting bags and write on with a dry erase marker to tell you what's in it and then reuse them. So that is super fun. Then she also grabbed, we love Katrinkles. She said she was hungry. <laughs> So these are stitch markers and they are all, these are the pie day stitch markers. So they're all different kinds of pie. They're so fun. So we've got empanadas, we've got a slice of pie, we got the actual pie, and then also the pie stitch markers are fun. Then she said she's working on a very large shawl that has a whole bunch of stitches cast on. And she loved this idea. So these, these are beautiful, colorful stitch markers I don't know if you can see that have numbers etched on them and it's 25 50 75 100 and we got three 100s so you can count when you've done 100 and this is great if you're doing something with large numbers she grabbed us a couple 
a this this is these we've had to actually reorder this is the cocoa knits measured mustard seed their tape measure it's such a fun shape and it's a re plastic recycled plastic i believe recycled something i know it's recycled and it's a tape measure and it comes in its own little bag so that you can keep it straight so that and it's such a great shape it fits in the hand amazingly that is the cocoa oh there's a note in here maybe it's going to tell me the information made from 100 percent fermented plant starch i knew it was something fancy fermented plant starch so it looks like plastic but it's not this is not a plastic product which is great because we need less plastic and this is the mindful from knitters pride mindful collection the beautiful beautiful stitch counter so that is a great pick miss susan we love it comes in its own little sweet bag and then this one this is one of my personal favorites i asked her to bring stuff the magnetic bracelet so this is a fun magnetic bracelet that you put on and it's a cuff and then as you're knitting if you have stitch markers um like these are going to stick to them anything that's metal and magnetic you can have a stitch marker you can have your needle and it just keeps it in place so that is a super fun collection that is the stowaway magnetic cuff <laughs> i just think it's funny that all these things stick to it we love that so those thank you susan for picking out those notions for us okay let me check my so we did that um that 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 yep that's my last thing so the thing i wanted to leave you with that's why i was looking for my piece of paper susan's yelling at me from the other room um april 17th put it on your calendar it is a saturday that is local yarn shop day we're so excited it had to be canceled last year but we are doing it this year um come and celebrate with us local yarn stores and and really we want to thank you just so much from the bottom of our hearts for helping us make it through this year this past year we were closed for a while then we partially reopened and we're working towards getting back to a full service kind of situation we just can't thank you enough for your support and that is what local yarn store day is for is for us to be there and be open and be a part of the community um <laughs> laura pray for when you knock over this okay sorry that was funny so um so it's the 17th we are going to have giveaways so come we're going to have like door prizes and stuff come sign up for those come shop we have a whole bunch she uh, susan said she ordered a whole bunch of new katrinkle stuff so we'll have all that our own amazing Catherine um has custom dyed a special yarn for local yarn store day so come check that out uh, we are just gonna have a lot of fun you know we like partying here so April 17th be here come and have fun um, and yeah so we'll have more information as we get it on local yarn store day also another thing make sure you come back next wednesday because next wednesday i will be talking about the new year of our pearl diver club we're so excited our pearl diver club is where our amazing murray who uh, is the husband of the shop owner who is a diver and photographer takes beautiful photographs of underwater things and then our amazing catherine of uh, Kitty Dye does um, custom colors and so these are exclusive to the um, we'll talk more about the club when it comes out when I have everything written down so I get it all right but if you are a Pearl Diver fan make sure to tune in next week where we will have the uh, beginnings of when you can sign up for the next year of shipments for the club so um, oh i'm so glad you love it debbie it is so fun and we love the pictures and the postcards and you know we love 
honoring the fact that we are here in Sarasota and we love our beach and we love our waters and you know it's a big part as you can see all the uh, little jellyfishes hanging over our head it's a big part of who we are here at a good yarn Sarasota so thank you so much for tuning in today and I will see you next week with more knitting fun from the knitting table thank you all so much bye bye